Hello everyone, Miss Silla here at Learn to Grow. I hope that you guys are having a great weekend. It is time for another spring garden tour. It's been three weeks since the last garden tour and so much has changed and grown. So I cannot wait to show you around the garden and I hope that you find the tips helpful along the way. And let me know what you guys are growing, how your garden's coming along. Would love to hear from you guys. And thank you so much for joining me today. So I'm gonna try to make this quick because it's starting to sprinkle. I hope that we don't get a downpour while I'm filming the video and I hope that you guys enjoy this video. So we're going to enter through the south side of the house. So right in front of the fence here we have some strawberries, a young fig tree, I almost forgot, some mint plants over here along with columbine flowers and calla lily. So let's head back over. So remember we have a greenhouse under construction so it's a mess in there i'm not going to show you inside we're going to wait till that's all done or finished and then we're going to give you a tour of the greenhouse composting tumbler bins and i do compost cardboard so i usually just cut them up into small pieces all right so there's a view from afar here and i'll go up in a deck too guys so that we can see it from the deck how it all looks so over on this two boxes so we got some random stuff growing some of these elephant garlic are volunteer plants they self-seed they grow these garlic corms around their roots and that's how they self-seed when you harvest them some of those corms get left in the ground and it takes about two seasons for them to mature into those big robust bulbs so also have some random let's say strawberry plants and i gotta show you the other box here now because i fed these worm castings a month before i fed these ones they have grown so big um so quick look how healthy they are how huge these are stay tuned for this video i'm actually working on a video on feeding strawberry plants with worm castings and worm tea so look at that isn't that amazing um, and then we'll take a look over here these were all planted at the same exact same time so these are still pretty small and again I, I did feed them worm castings this is actually catching up i fed, the, I fed these uh, strawberry plants worm castings about two weeks ago now but again these ones have like a four to six week six weeks ahead um, because they were fed early on volunteer potato plants i guess i'm just going to be leaving this here i don't really like to kill plants we'll just let them be i know it's really crowded in here these are just some random plants i will be finding a new home for the strawberries later on this fall and another volunteer potato plant that did not get harvested harvested last season so they just keep popping up these are jerusalem artichokes so these actually get really big and i think they're a cousin of the sunflower family i think they get about over six to eight feet tall so um hopefully it doesn't all get too crowded in there uh, or otherwise i might have to transplant some of them into another area okay over here are just some random plants i need to find homes for still the tomato plants are getting so big so these are the same tomato plants that i grew indoors about three months ago now some of them are starting to fruit these are all uh, sun gold variety tomatoes they are cherry top tomato i love how sweet the tomatoes are and it is an indeterminate type of tomato so they will produce until the first day of frost so around maybe october and they'll get up to about four to five feet tall seedlings these are winter sown purple bok choy pink celery these are so pretty if you can see that pink stems so I cannot wait to grow these some pepper plants Italian and Anaheim, Anaheim pepper, peppers that I'll be planting containers more strawberry plants that I'm, I'll be giving away so I thinned out the strawberry beds since that's where I'm putting them is just random containers these are bay leaf starts they've all rooted so I've been working on this since last fall so we'll be getting some more bay leaf uh, trees or plants more winter sowing, Roma, and more sun gold tomatoes. I'm just giving them away because I planted a lot of tomatoes, but that's okay. I like to share with family and friends. So more random stuff. Um, strawberries. I think this is dahlia. Those were started from seeds. I've got more dahlias that were started from tubers. A couple of big trees that need home. More tomatoes in there. There's a, a young blueberry plant in there. So we'll go around and show you the rest. But also, th this is the little um, raised or freestanding garden bed that my husband built. And got some purple bok choy in there, Mitsuna, priced said lettuce, beautiful, delicious lettuce, by the way. And you can get those seeds from Kali Kim, 29. 
and that more purple bok choy. These are tatsoi that are bolting. So I'll be pulling this out and I'm going to sew some red mustard greens that I also got from Kawa Kim. So you guys, if you don't have a lot of space to grow, if you have a deck or patio, you don't have a big yard, you can grow food in small places. This is 30 inches by 30 inches. And look how much food there is that you can grow in such a small space. So I encourage you guys to grow some food. If you guys um, have a little space, you can even get like a vertical um, garden containers or just growing in pots. You can definitely do that. See these tomatoes here? These are all just growing in five gallon pots. I haven't transplanted them yet in the, in the ground, but I think I might just be leaving some of them in there. Here is a tomato that I transplanted in this 20 gallon pot. It has a diameter of 22 inches. This is another sun gold tomato. Now I like to grow cherry tomatoes because they mature faster here. So remember guys, I'm in the Pacific Northwest zone 8B. So we have a moderately cool climate. So um, I'm not really, or I haven't had success with bigger tomatoes because don't, we don't have a long enough grow, growing season. But since we have a greenhouse now, I might be able to prolong our growing season. So also growing these or this and coconut coir and warm castings only so it's another experiment that i'm working on and i cannot wait to show you the results so this is only going to be fed with warm castings and warm tea so i've got some mint plants in there and i'll go around the other side sage is blooming bees love that so we've got some let's see rosemary coming back to life i have to prune it back and some lavender that actually had a hard time this winter as well so prune that back as well oregano lemon balm more lavender lemon balm again they grow so easy guys if you haven't grown lemon balm uh, they propagate very easily don't let them go to seed because they'll spread throughout your garden but it's great to have them it smells wonderful repels mosquitoes flies oregano so i'll just go down this row here these are there are some more herbs here these two rosemary were started I think three years ago now from cuttings and look how big it is now guys it's about probably over two and a half feet tall with a spread of about maybe 18 inches this is french lavender just planted this uh, about a month and a half ago a couple more lavender i forgot the variety i think it's the same as the other ones i showed you earlier bergarten uh, bergarten sage lemon thyme english thyme that i just pruned back it started to flower and so i cut up all the flower buds or at least i tried now you can't let them flower the bees love it but if you let them flower then it won't produce as much foliage for you guys and i have a video on that coming up so stay tuned i record a video on pruning back your herbs so that way you can maximize your harvest so let me get head back over here and we'll go back to that side of the garden strawberry beds remember guys i think i mentioned this earlier but i am doing an experiment with the strawberries so Look how big these are. Fed with warm castings about six weeks ago. And these I just fed with warm castings about two weeks ago. They are starting to catch up. So they're getting bigger. And these ones here, I'm not giving any warm castings. That's like my control group. So stay tuned for that video, guys. So let's head over here. Let's take a look at the rest of the herbs. These are mint. So guys, if you don't want your mint to take over your garden, get them planted in a window box container. They spread sideways. And so the window box container, the rectangle ones, is, a, is suitable for mint plants, like the ones here. This is chocolate mint, such a beautiful color and smells so good. So this is a window box pot. So it's rectangle, so it spreads and it'll keep spreading sideways. And it'll grow well in that kind of container. These are the basil that I started indoors. So I think I got like four pots, but I'm going to be planting some of those with tomatoes. And it's a great companion plant with, to uh, with tomato plants. They can help repel aphids, tomato hornworms, and also can enhance the flavor of tomatoes. Oh, I didn't show you guys this one. This is chocolate berry. Met some friends on social media and they live here locally. So they gave me the, this chocolate berry plant. Tastes like a, a between a coffee and chocolate tomato plants that I need to find homes for. All right, let's go down over here. Oh, this is a blueberry plant guys this is called perpetual blueberry it bears fruit twice a year so summer and again in the fall got some fruits in there so random colored green plants that i transplanted that self-seeded last i think before the end of the summer so i just planted them here and we've been harvesting some leaves from them purple or yeah purple bok choy beautiful variety guys i love this one i'm so glad it's so glad it's doing well this year 
last year they got devoured by cabbage moths or the cabbage moth caterpillars pineapple sage these have red trumpet like flowers attracts butterflies and hummingbirds so beautiful if you plant them in the ground with proper spacing they will get to about i think it was about five to six feet tall so they get really big i think I'm going to uh, just keep it pruned back so that way it doesn't get too big because i have a lot of other things going growing over here dill italian parsley and i've got a curly parsley back there oh i want to show you guys this onion that i regrew from an onion that was sprouting in the pantry it's so big it's actually toppling over so it's going to seed or flower so you can get some seeds from onions that you can regrow from scraps or an old onion that you can just stick in the ground look how thick this stalk is so these um most likely will not have a bulb it's just a smallish bulb because it's a second season of the onion so that way it's going to just produce seeds almost forgot about the cilantro these are great volunteer plants they sell seeds that are pretty easy to grow they grow best in cooler weather they tend to bolt or flower in the summer months but then you'll get more seeds so again there's the sage it's blooming so i got all the herbs surrounding the garden now we'll head over here I've got some nasturtiums. This is the bush type, so this is not the trailing variety. So it only get about to about two feet tall at the most. So it's great for like borders or even in baskets or in containers. Some peas. There's more on the other side. And then we'll head over to the left here. This is a bok choy. This is just one plant, guys, that's bolting. Look how huge it is. So I left, I left them flower because the bees love it. It attracts pollinators. And also we'll be getting tons of seeds. Look at all the seed pods. It's just huge, guys. It's probably about, it has a three feet spread. This is one bok choy plant. Wonderful. So look at all these. Look how beautiful they look. So that's prized head lettuce. We love this lettuce. It's so good. We've been harvesting it. So crisp. And these are the red cabbage. Look how much bigger they are since the last update. Broccoli. And in between the red cabbage and broccoli are some red onions. Now I do companion planting a lot because it helps repel insect pests. Now because of the sulfur content in onions and garlic, it's supposed to repel aphids, I think onion thrips, white flies. So hopefully it works. I've had a great success with planting, companion planting with garlic whenever I have brassica plants because it smells so strong. Those are garlic in the backside right there, guys. Those are hard neck garlic. And then I've got some other plants I transplanted here because I just want to find them homes when I thinned out some plants. That's Napa cabbage. I might just be harvesting them when they're um, baby greens, kale along the border there, Russian kale. These are all volunteer plants I found throughout the garden. These, all these baby kale. So I just dug them up and put them here in a box. And then I sold some more seeds here. So proper spacing for radish is about an inch to two inches apart, depending on how big your radishes are. And these are some young cone flowers. So we'll get some beautiful flowers from those this summer. So I'm going to turn to my left here on this garden box. This garden box is about, I think, oh my gosh, more than 10 feet. I'm guessing about 12 feet long and about two feet wide, a little bit over two feet, maybe 30 inches wide. So I've got some red onions in the border there. And these are some Napa or Chinese cabbage, volunteer cilantro plants, some spinach, and in between, I sowed some radishes. So since radishes can be harvested in about three to four weeks, I can harvest that before the spinach plants get really big. Mitsuna, this is the Ben Hoshi Mitsuna that I got from Baker Creek Seeds. Look how beautiful the stems are. So yummy. I love mustard greens. You can eat them in salad, soups, sandwiches, whatever you want to do. Really good for you. These are volunteer barrage plants. I've been pulling them up because look at all these. These are all volunteer. Volunteer plants from seeds, guys. If you let your barrage plants go to seeds, you will get a lot of plants. I think they will look so beautiful with all the purple flowers and they are edible. The flowers are edible. The leaves are edible. They kind of have a fuzzy peach fuzz on it, kind of spiky, but it kind of tastes like cucumbers. Really delicious. More lemon balms. Remember, they self-seed. Another little plant. Oh, actually, this is a big plant. It's called Malva. It's going to be, it gets to up to six, seven feet tall. Beautiful purple flowers. 
there's this bay leaf plant that I pruned back last summer. It's starting to branch out on the sides there. Now, even though bay leaf plants are actually from the Mediterranean region, they have adapted to our climate. And I planted this in the ground, I think about going on almost two years now. Check out all these blueberries. This is Spartan blueberries and they are hardy to zone five. Lots of flowers on that one. And another same blueberry type, Spartan blueberries. Getting lots of flowers in this one as well. A couple of lemon balm bushes. Look how big they get, guys. I probably need to kind of thin them out so that way your plant, plants are not so crowded. You got to let them have enough air ventilation so to prevent diseases, uh, keep, give them better airflow. Okay, I'm going to walk in between the plants here. So the potatoes are definitely flourishing. Look at all that. So the Yukon Gold potatoes are a determinate type of potatoes, so they don't need any hilling or mounding of dirt or compost as they grow because the potatoes will grow along the roots of the plants. Now the russet potatoes, I think those are all the russets, they need to be hilled because the potatoes or tubers will grow along the side of the stems as it grows. So you always want to mound your plants about every two weeks with about maybe two to four inches of dirt or compost. All these elephant garlic are really growing, starting to grow those scapes. Remember guys, if you're growing hard neck garlic, you'll get these scapes or the, the scapes that will turn into, bloom into a flower. You'll want to cut those off as soon as possible. In fact, I think I should do that sometime this week. That way the energy is focused on growing the bulb and the cloves. So you get a robust bulb instead of the plants putting the energy into producing a flower and then going to seed. So you want to cut those scapes off as soon as possible. So we've got some red onions growing in front of the borage there. More red onions here. And along on the trellis are some raspberries, guys. I transplanted the raspberries from the uh, left side or the other side of the garden um, in the fruit orchard. But then we were getting so many, so much shade in there that um, they're not getting enough sun and they were starting to mold. The fruits were starting to mold last year. Also got some more raspberry plants along this trellis here that my husband just built about a month ago and more garlic these are all hardneck garlic varieties these are the elephant garlic that i planted last fall and i'm not sure if you guys um, watched the video but i did fertilize them with worm castings about two weeks ago so you want to get them fertilized during the bulbing stage and it's usually about four to six weeks before you harvest your garlic and you don't want to use too much nitrogen because you want the growth to focus more on the bulbs not the leaves and too much nitrogen can make them grow more leaves instead of putting more energy in the bulbs. So worm castings is great because it's got a balance nutrients and also the nitrogen in it is slowly released as well as the other nutrients. Oh gosh, these are all Russian kale. They've all toppled over. They've gone to seed. I need to stake them up or pull them out. But I kind of want the seeds though because I saved the seeds for microgreens during the fall and winter months. So we'll need to stake this up. More garlic, hardneck garlic. This is Egyptian walking onions. So my, our friends gave this to us. So they are so pretty. The flowers are so pretty. Cannot wait to see them. More garlic on this side. Again, they're right behind the brassica plants. And over in this little bed here, um, got some random stuff growing. So these are some baby red kale, scarlet kale, and some potato volunteer plants because I grew potatoes here two years ago. So they keep popping up. I just leave them there some random strawberry plants in there that I pulled out from the other side of the garden. So I always try to find homes, guys, because I don't like to kill plants, So, but that's okay. So I'll find them a new home this fall and maybe just give them away. All right, over on these pots, these are 20 gallon pots, by the way, are some fig trees, young fig trees. The leaves are starting to emerge and I planted some strawberries along with them. I'm getting some more rain, guys, so I better hurry. Another fig tree, this one's actually taken off. So now I don't remember which varieties these are, but two are Desert King and two are Honey Figs. So quick walk to the old mini orchard here before I get really rained on. Huge rhubarb plants. I think you guys have seen this. I've been posting them on Instagram. So I need to separate them over the crowns because there are a few crowns in these and I just gotten, got, gotten lazy, didn't get around to it. So I'll be doing that hopefully in the fall. So the other ones right here, this is the, probably the biggest leaf right now out of all the rhubarb leaves so far. It looks like it's at least 
about maybe almost three feet wide. These are some blueberries here. I cannot remember the variety, but there are some berries in that one. That was a small one. This one's actually top hat blueberries. So this is great to grow in containers. They get to about maybe 18 inches tall. That's it. So if you have a small space, you can plant these uh, top hat blueberries. They grow well in small um, spaces. They don't need a lot of room. This says blue jay. There's some green berries in there throughout. See? More berries. Hopefully we get to them before the birds do. This one is Chippewa. Chippewa blueberries. That's the variety. So these can actually get really big if you give them proper spacing and just make sure that they are healthy and fed well. And remember, blueberries tend to like more of an acidic soil. So make sure you amend your soil with some soil acidifier if you have any. They seem to do better in that kind of condition because they require more iron and acidic soil can actually dissolve the iron faster so the blueberries can do can thrive better so i'm really bummed about the apple trees last year all the flowers were eaten by the deer and then this year it got cold and then hot and cold again so i think most of the blossoms fell off again so hopefully next year will be, will be better we'll just have to just prune them back again and I guess we'll see how that goes. And this is uh, the five white pear tree. We had a lot of flowers on this tree. And they, again, they fell off. They, I don't know what happened. I think it's because of the weather again. So this is our rock garden. Oh gosh, a lot of weeds, irises. I didn't really catch this in the video, but they already bloomed last week. Columbine, it's, oh goodness, it's fallen over. And I think these are some lilies in there. So I'm up on a deck. I really want to show you guys the apple tree, that spalliard apple tree. These have lots of apples. Remember, there's also five different varieties now because my mom grafted in a honey crisp apple, but those are not fruiting yet. Look at that, guys. Some apples there and more apples on this side. My phone's really getting wet. I better um, hurry. I think this is a pre triant blueberry. Lots of fruits in that one. Still in the container and pineapple. Um, vertical tower, strawberry tower. You guys can grow strawberries in a vertical garden tower, guys. There's some fruits in there already. And I do rotate this every day because um, the, I want to make sure that all the plants get sufficient sunlight. I will do that later. Oh, look at that. The strawberries right there. Let's take a look in the garden from up above. So there you guys. If you can see all that, look how lush it is compared to how it was three weeks ago. Go around over a little bit there. There you go. And the two garden boxes. And all the random plants I have to plant. Big trees and pots with strawberries. So that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. It's starting to pour. I'm really getting wet here, but it was actually fun doing this tour. Actually, it's nicer when it's not so bright and sunny. You can actually get a nice um, look of everything. Well, that was actually fun doing the tour with you guys today. Despite of a little bit of rain, it's actually not so bad. In fact, I'm going to get some planting done because it's actually not bad to plant when it's kind of gloomy. So that way the plants don't get into shock, especially when it's hot. So it's actually perfect to plant some of the tomatoes and peppers in the pots. Thanks for joining me today, everyone. And I hope that you guys enjoy your weekend. Happy gardening.